Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is your the one and only photo news fix. This fix is brought to you once again by Squarespace. Now, I've been using Squarespace for jaredpoland.com for 15 freaking years. 15! Now, there's a reason I've been using Squarespace for my own portfolio for that long, and it's just so damn simple to use. It's simply drag, drop, and go, no coding needed. In fact, when I uploaded my Safari photos to my Squarespace site, I did it in a matter of minutes. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Before we get into the first story, this set is under construction, so give us a couple weeks to make it look pretty. We're working on it! First up in what was a busy week, Leica announced their SL3, which is replacing, you guessed it, the SL2. Leica brought a bunch of camera industry people to Germany a few weeks back to spend 24 hours with the new camera, and it was, I mean, it was amazing. Oh wait, I, I wasn't there, so I wouldn't know. For those that didn't know, Leica makes something other than rangefinders and expensive point and shoots like the Q3. They also make a full frame mirrorless camera that carries the SL moniker and is part of the, it's too early for this. Uh, mountain lions, blah, 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 lions, lions, lions. The SL3 sports a new 60 megapixel BSI sensor with what Leica calls triple resolution technology. Triple resolution technology. Doesn't ring like L Mount Alliance, now does it? Nope. That means you can shoot JPEG or DNG RAW files in 60, 36, and 18 megapixels, which I think is kind of dumb. The ISO has been expanded from 50 to 100,000. The SL Three. now has phase detection AF and not just contrast detection. I mean, it's not that far behind. Right. From the looks of the SL3's body, it looks really well thought out with a sleek, minimalist design, except for that massive Leica right in the middle. Since Leica shrunk the body slightly from the SL, it's lost half a stop of IBIS down to five stops, and the flash sync went from 1 to 50th to 1 to 100th of a second. Now that's not a huge deal to me, as I don't really shoot flash, or I actually don't even shoot Leica, but maybe it's a huge deal to those flash shooters that are out there. It's kind of odd that a company goes back in technology, then forward in technology, but hey, it's Leica. I Leica. Now for those who hate traditional on and off switches, the SL3 now has a power button. Yep, press it to turn on, short press it to put it in standby and long press it to turn it off. Clearly much simpler than a switch. If you think this camera's for you, get ready to fork over seven grand. Now I'd love to try it out myself, so like it. Can you please send me one so I can like it? it? Next up, if you've ever considered renting cameras or lenses online in the past 10 years or so, you've probably seen lens rentals and borrow lenses. Well, one of them isn't gonna make it out alive. Lens Rentals has acquired Borrow Lenses from Shutterfly, who purchased Borrow Lenses all the way back in 2013. So what does this mean for Borrow Lenses? Well, according to Petapixel, who reached out to Tyler Beckman, Lens Rentals CEO, and I quote, Lens Rentals is not acquiring employees or locations as a part of this acquisition. And we did acquire the Borrow Lenses brand and select assets, and we'll bring the Borrow Lenses assets under the Lens Rentals brand, expanding our customer base while growing our inventory. So basically, you can stick a fork in Borrow Lenses because they're better than done. This is done, man. From the way that reads, Lens Rentals saw an opportunity to acquire Borrow Lenses' customers as well as gear, and as much as I want to say put a competitor out of business, it's certainly possible they did Shutterfly a solid as borrow lenses might have already been failing. I've personally always had great experiences with lens rentals, and that's not a plug, because anyone that's used lens rentals knows that they ship fast, ship in Pelican cases, and include tape to tape up the box when you slap a return label on it. Yeah, and they include the label too. They make it easy. Now that's the reason they continue to grow as well as gobble up competitors. Real quick, before we get into the last story, I have a quick update for you because Nikon released firmware 5.0 after I already recorded this photo news fix. So it's not gonna be in this week's fix, but we will be talking about it more in detail on this week's Raw Talk, which comes out on Friday. It's available wherever you get your podcasts as well as being available on YouTube now. So be sure to tune in on Friday to hear what we have to say about 
firmware 5.0. And finally, boy oh boy did Canon and Sony mess up big time. Or did they? Now I'll dive into that more in just a second, but last week Nikon announced out of nowhere that they entered into an agreement to acquire 100% of the outstanding membership interest in RED, and RED would become a wholly owned subsidiary of Nikon. And I quote, pursuant to a membership interest purchase agreement with Mr. James Gennard, its founder, and Mr. Jared Land, its current president, subject to the satisfaction of certain closing conditions there under. Under. Well, I'm no Porsche driver or Leica owner, uh, but does that read like the sale isn't exactly final just yet? Now for a minute, let's assume that it goes through and nothing else is wrong. This is huge for Nikon. With one fell swoop, Nikon ups their cinema cred. Now I've got a few questions. Why did Red choose to sell now? Are they floundering in the industry? Is their patent regarding compressed raw files under fire? Did Nikon see a potential for stopping their competitors by purchasing the patents from RED? Will Nikon discontinue EF and RF mounts in favor of Z-mount RED cameras? Salty. Will Nikon co-brand future cine cameras to compete with Sony and Canon? There's so many unknowns right now, but I think the biggest question is, did Canon and Sony mess up by not trying to gobble up RED themselves? Themselves. This Coke tastes like Pepsi. Now that's an interesting one right there. On one hand, possibly. On the other, without knowing Red's financials, maybe they dodged a bullet. Regardless, as of now, I think Nikon pulled off something pretty huge, so big congrats to them on what they were able to do. Now what do you think? Let me know down below. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.